10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In an era of evolving threats and advancing military technologies, the ability to predict and counter threats is paramount. Modern tactical missiles pose significant threats due to their speed, maneuverability, and ability to evade traditional defense systems. Understanding their infrared signatures is essential for developing effective countermeasures. Through international research initiatives, NATO scientists and engineers from the AVT RTG 376 Working Group are working together to advance the state of the art in IR signature predictions. This involves sophisticated modeling and simulation techniques to accurately predict the heat emissions of various missile types. If we understand the infrared emission of a missile in different regions of the infrared spectrum, then we can understand how we can better design sensors to detect those missiles. And if we can understand in what kind of scenarios those missiles will be detected, uh, then we can make sure we have an appropriate response from our defensive aid systems. By understanding the signature and being able to model the signature of a tactical missile, we're able to increase the survivability of NATO platforms. Our infrared signature for different kind of vehicles from rocket to other kind of aircraft is uh, crucial for a lot of military applications. And for those applications, particles are often involved as a result of combustion or as a result of the rocket process. So by assessing and measuring in a precise way the particle concentration, we hope that we can uh, assess the infrared signature of the, um, let's say, a rocket or an aircraft. Through rigorous experimentation and analysis, the NATO group's research efforts are aimed at refining IR signature prediction models, improving accuracy, and expanding our understanding of missile behaviors in various operational environments. The tests are being conducted at a number of locations across the NATO Alliance, including a research lab at a remote former Royal Air Force base in the south of England. The testing work that we're doing here is quite unique in that it's providing controlled experimental data to a full range of um, NATO allies, which is a, a relatively unique experience um, to generate that sort of data within a controlled environment. And we've been injecting metal particles into the, the gas hot exhaust so that we can see how those particles heat up and then are dispersed through the, the plume flow. Um, this is simulating um, missile systems and their exhaust flows so that we can try and predict better the detection of those uh, missiles in flight. The tests are really important to provide um, actual experimental data on these kind of phenomena. We use the Rolls-Royce Gnome helicopter engines used in the Sea Kings. The Sea Kings were decommissioned in 2018, but with the engines themselves, we're able to power compressors to deliver the flows that we need, which are of a realistic size and at a relatively low cost to create experiments that uh, allow people to get the data for things like infrared signature prediction. Here today, uh, we're focusing on particles in the plume. Some missiles have uh, particles in their propellant, and these appear in the plume. They may emit and scatter infrared energy. And by testing in a controlled environment, we're able to understand the effect of those particles in the plume such that we can understand how to model them effectively. So metallic particles, when they are heated to those sorts of temperatures, emit energy in the infrared range. So we have a large number of um, infrared cameras and spectrometers, which are gathering how much emission those particles are giving us at temperature. Particulates within the exhaust is a very difficult area. and They don't behave quite the way that the gas behaves. You might think it would be simpler with little bits of solid, but actually it's more difficult because the gas behaves fairly uniformly, whereas the particles don't. So trying to get information um, on which you can then validate your techniques for predicting is really important as a group. It will increase understanding of both signature from our own uh, missile systems and those of opposition force missile systems and we'll be able to have more confidence in understanding what to expect from those propulsion systems. So um, for a tactical missile 
there is a propellant which uh, drives the missile forward through the air producing a hot plume out the back and it's the hot plume which can often drive the infrared signature of the missile. Uh, the plume that comes out the back can vary dependent on uh, the missile design and there are lots of things that you need to consider. Uh, for instance, the propellant type, uh, the burn rate of that propellant, uh, also the, the launch conditions for the missile and the signature will vary throughout the missile's flight. You also need to think about the, the observer to the missile, what aspect are you looking at the missile from and what kind of range are you looking at the missile from. So there are a lot of things we need to include within our modelling so that we can give the right advice to the customer. Sometimes, you know, people say, what's a thermofluid? And I say to them, well, you're standing in one. And every thing that flows, whether it be a liquid or a gas, is a thermofluid. It's moving around, it's changing in pressure, it's changing in temperature, it's even changing in terms of chemical reactions. So really anything that flows and transfers heat, for example, there are seven crystalline states of chocolate and you think, okay. And the problem, for example, that you would have with chocolate is you want to put it into a mold. So you want to melt it and you want to put it into a mold. Uh, but if you work it too hard in that process, you will end up with it, what they call blooming. So you open chocolate where it's got that white covering usually because it's being left at too high a temperature somewhere. So you have to try and make it flow, apply the right pressure at the right time, at the right temperature, to make sure it ends up in the mold and people get their bar of chocolate. Seems simple, but it's not. Well, here we're trying to move flows around in the same way. We're trying to get them from A to B. We're trying to deliver the flow to a nozzle. So that requires pressurization. Then we've got to heat it up. We mustn't overheat it because we'll melt things. We have to get it to the right temperature, so whether it be chocolate or whether it be air, it's the same problem. Through NATO collaboration, we gain access to experts across all the participating nations and jointly we can work together to sort of benchmark and improve our processes and jointly agree on best practice in tackling this kind of problem. And we also gain access to uh, test facilities and test procedures across all the NATO nations so that we can form the test cases we've been using in the group. For example, the test case we're running here today at this test laboratory in the UK. Thing and I would like um, uh, yeah, to thank the Alliance for uh, promoting this uh, uh, joint experiment. This is very helpful for research engineers as myself, but I think also for uh, the other engineers, we, it's also helpful to build new collaborations and to exchange about our techniques. So this is a very fruitful experience, in my opinion. As threats continue to evolve, NATO remains committed to advancing its missile defense capabilities through cutting-edge research and innovation. By investing in IR signature predictions, we ensure our forces are prepared to face the challenges of the modern battlefield and safeguard peace and security for our nations.